Are you interested in urban agriculture? Then stay with us on this episode of AgriConnect, where we talk to the CEO of Chrysolis Farm, where he's into snail farming, snail production from a greenhouse right in his backyard. Do stay with us. Right. One can say you're actually a snail guru because yeah. Trisley started as a snail farm and has now expanded to what it is now. Yeah. So maybe, well, I'll give you the chance to introduce yourself and then give us more details as to who you are, what you do. Yeah. So my name is Felix Sapia and uh, I'm the CEO or spokesperson for Trisolis. Uh, Trisolis basically means that solace is a place of comfort. So if you have tried all others and it has failed, Try mm. so okay. Yes. So when we came into the setup, people were doing uh, different forms of snail farming in small quantities. So I am a civil engineer by education, but uh, I use that now on the farm. So now I call myself a bona fide farmer. Uh, I've been doing farming for seven years. I'm uh, happily married with daughters. I uh, have a lot Real of dad. daughters. Yeah, okay. yeah. And then I have a lot of workforce here as well. So currently, Trisolis employs 22 people. Wow. Yes. Some are welding team, some are snail team, fabricators, others are painters and other artisans that work on our projects. Yes. So that is Felix. Well, looking at your background, this is very different from what you currently do. Yes. Why did you even mention it to still have a whole? Yeah. So the year is 2015, when uh, after school, everybody will go search for jobs. Oh. Yeah. Uh, for me, I had a rude awakening, but it was good. A man just stood me aside and said, there's no job in Ghana. And the ones that you are seeing, people have their uncles and their rich dads and all that, pushing their friends in there. Well, whilst I didn't have anybody, I don't have any rich uncle, I have no rich dad. My dad actually was deceased, deceased about 20 years ago. Oh. Yes. So when I was 14, uh, I started hustling on my own. Yeah, my dad died when I was 10 years. And exactly 14 years, I started doing things on my own, like conducting. So I was a, a bus conductor, mate. Mm. The guys that help drivers load passengers in, you know. And I did that for a few years. And I through that, I was able to fund myself to uh, school. That is a senior high school. And then to the university. So even in university, I was still doing that. And that was how I bought my first car, my first vehicle, that I was still doing the conducting. I nearly got consumed by the conducting because I was earning so much money. Of money. <laughs> and then I didn't want to stop. But I realized as well that education is everything. You know, people don't play education that is not really needed. But I can tell you that it's good to be an educated poor man mm-hmm. than to be uh, a rich, non-educated person. Because if someone wants to help you, the first thing they ask, do you have any education mm-hmm. background? Even if you yeah. are the most dirtiest person, they will ask you that first, so they know how to help you. So I'll urge all my your viewers to first seek education, and then all others will be added on. To wow, your background is impressive. Yes. Okay. So you've been in this for a while, since 2015. Yes. How has the experience been? Well, it's been ups and down. But, you know, one thing I think most uh, of us should be looking at is looking within. So don't think that someone else is going to encourage you. Someone else is going to give you morale and uh, support and all that. You know, so it has been ups and downs. But I tell myself that nothing is easy. I'm even fortunate. I know people who carry a lot of load Mm -hmm. before they can get even one square meal. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you are doing something, even though it's tedious, it's stressful, Mm -hmm. but I still have time for myself. I still have a lot of pecs. Sorry to say I sleep in a house and not outside. Usually I take drives in the evenings and it's it's really pathetic. Where people are sleeping and then, then where people stay. So I tell myself mine is far better. So every day that keeps me going, going that yeah. the, even with the ups and downs and everything, uh, I don't really get deterred. So snail, for instance, is a new frontier. It's a new kind of system that we are putting up. There's no research on snails. 
there's no background or support yeah. system yeah. unlike chicken where or poultry mm -hmm. you can go they know diseases that affect them now we had to start from scratch some of the diseases we don't even know their oh, name yeah. we just explain and we know what to give to the snails to cure those things yeah. so uh, it's still a very gray area but we've been able to do a lot of uh, research on our own hence making it a very profitable and more competitive because there's very few people yeah. in that field because of why uh, because of the diseases and other things that are not known which makes us pioneers and uh, basically hands down awareness on that field yeah. so you mentioned diseases and you seem to have a wide array of resources or knowledge when it comes to this field what are some of the diseases that affect snails okay so snails are the perfect habitat we we'll call them trisolis mm -hmm. so they are like the trisolis of the animal world if any animal wants to lay eggs they look for a snail or a slug and lay eggs into them okay. because they are moist they are not bony so every insect can eat them so if i am a house flyer and i'm looking for a very convenient place to lay my eggs where better than a snail mm -hmm. so they one of the pests that we have is the zemophit fly so that one is a red fly and some are green that lay their eggs into the snails and then it has about incubation period of two weeks and then you see that the snail will be healthy going about its day but the eggs of the zemophit has hatched and then it, they are eating the snail gradually from inside so by the time the snail dies the young ones would have been mm. bigger and they can fly away that's how they use snails so we are also doing mitigation measures by one providing them the greenhouse which does not allow flies to enter so if you are very careful there wouldn't be any flies entering that setup so that is one uh, disease that we have found or pests and rodents so uh, rats uh, other rodents also take advantage of that and eat the snails the snails are always uh, uh susceptible to other diseases and prone to other pests and uh, yes and then also hydration they get dehydrated very easily so when they walk from here to here they need a source of water because they are working on their water they're using water so it's like they run out of fuel every time i have to replenish themselves so uh lack of water is also one mm -hmm. thing that kills the snail and they are photosensitive so a snail looking at this light or daylight is like you looking into a car light in the evening that has mm. you know turned on high that's how according to research that we saw that snails feel about light normal wow. light that's why you don't see them in the day mm. they are always in their shell really? hiding their eyes from the light so something as good as light can even kill snails and then a lot of breeze or wind going into the greenhouse can also kill snails so snails are a bit uh, susceptible to a lot of things mm. and the worst thing is that the food that we give them also kills snails so the watermelon the sweet potatoes the all that they apply a lot of pesticide mm. on it yeah. and when you give to snails they die so we tell people that if you're giving your snails food from outside kindly know the source yes and all grow for them yourself mm. or use some of the snail feed that we do which yes, is pre-formulated pre okay. pre-processed uh, mm. uh, pre okay. for the snails and it contains calcium mm. already and then we have this that is also pure calcium okay. which is eggshells and a few other shells that we branded together mm. and some additives as well to help the snails mm. so yes that is now let's look at this what, what does this contain the feed yeah so it contains some grains some uh, carbohydrates uh we have some vitamins in here added some animal protein in mm. there for them and the calcium is very important because if a snail will lay eggs it uses uh, the calcium if it will build a shell it uses, uses calcium. calcium everything basically borders on calcium now let's look at some of the rules. You know, there are some that will move faster compared to others depending yeah. on what people are comfortable with. In Ghana, you have been in this for a while. What are some of the breeds that people should focus on when they want to venture? Okay, so in Ghana, unfortunately, we have the liberty of just doing one type. Mm. 
there are three types of snails that is the main types we have three types we have the a a a which is the achatina achatina mm. the one we call mwapa or the good snail that is sold on the market and we have the a f which is called the folica which is the ones we call uh, uh french snails mm. you know they are smaller uh, they are yellowish in color and they don't buy we don't buy them those are the ones we find in our houses yeah yeah everywhere you see them they are considered as pests and then we have the am which is the chachatina marginata which is uh, known uh, friendly as the nigerian type of snail it is black or the meat is dark and then it's very large and uh, but the downside with all these have their pros and cons so the normal AE the Mwapa that we do, they are very susceptible, they are fragile. Mortality rate is a bit higher mm -hmm. if you don't follow a lot of the processes. But those are the most profitable because uh, they lay a lot of the eggs. They are sought after than any of the snails mm. and they are very expensive in terms of yeah, market okay. yes the af is not sold mm. because we find them at the backyard yeah, on our loo yes. and other places <laughs> so people don't really like yeah. them so you can't even sell them when you are even dashing it out to people they, they don't, don't even yeah. want it yes so it brings us to the am so the am is semi-marketable depending on the location if you are selling it in Bota and a, a little uh, around the central then it will sell okay. but when it comes to the other parts of ghana they don't mm. really like that type uh, but they are larger and they are very strong they lay very few eggs up to about 15 eggs and the aa lays up to about 70 eggs wow yes so these are the difference the pros and cons but the best one that we raise now is the aa which is the mwapa which has a conical brownish mm. zigzag shell yes so if I'm about to venture into um, the snail industry, how long should I expect my snails to, be, to take to be ready for table? Okay, so the station period for snails is a year, wow. one whole year. But the good thing is that unlike rabbit or poultry that you have to feed them morning, afternoon, evening, these, they eat only once a day. Mm. You take care of them less than 20 minutes in a day and you are done with them. So it makes labor cost very mm. good. It makes uh, other resources very good. And snails are the most profitable farm animal per square meter because you can, in a square meter, you can put about five zero snails in here and still make it work. You can put poultry mm -hmm. on them, yeah. yes, in one space and make enough revenue to last you. So uh, snails do not make noise or smell. Mm -hmm. Interesting fact about snails, they do not make noise or smell they are they are one of the most profitable yeah. farm animals because they lay a lot some snails have been known to even lay up to 120 eggs wow yes and almost all of them if you know how to hatch will hatch and snails have up to about 14,000 teeth for grinding and snails are one of the only animals with two sets of teeth mm -hmm. they have one lining their front up to their belly and they have one inside their mouth, like the normal type. So they can nibble on things with the outside one, and they can nibble on things the with the inside, inside one. one. Wow. And they have about 14,000 teeth, small, 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 small teeth, wow. all over, yes. And snails are, can stay in the soil for up to four months without eating. It's called estivation, or in other animals, it's called hibernating. So hibernation is where animals reduce their activity and slow down their bodily functions so that they reserve energy for a longer time. Oh. But snails can do that best yeah. than any other animal. Months. Yes. That's so, quite a long time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So yeah, that is yeah. snails. So you grow your snails in the greenhouse. So let's look at the traditional way of growing them in the boxes as well as the greenhouse. Why the greenhouse? Okay, so with every other thing, we look at commercial or uh, scalability. So if you are doing them in boxes, there's no possibility of you scaling. Mm -hmm. That means that you need a whole lot of boxes and you might not be able to take care of all of them. But the greenhouse is a living and breathing system, which makes sure that everything you put in there rots and 
you know, mm -hmm. tends and adds to the soil, and every other thing helps the system. It's an organic system. So we chose that because one, it's concealed from the environment. Okay. That is, other animals cannot enter freely, and it's a commercial size. It's very big, okay. unlike the small boxes that people do. Those are considered hobby. You know, if you're doing something mm. small, test case scenario. But if you want something big, then the greenhouse is the way to go. And the greenhouse is semi-automated. So you don't go and water the snails like by yourself. Because every time you, you touch anything belonging to the snail, you contaminate yeah. it. So you are putting your hand in their water, sprinkling. You are using all sorts of uh, uh, touch and, you know, raking in, etc. But the greenhouse takes care of itself. It's a living system, so it cleans itself. Things rot and add to the soil, etc. And uh, it reduces the sun's intensity by up to 40%, mm. meaning that only 60% of sunlight. We'll be able to open their eyes exactly, <laughs> during the day. Which makes it better for them. And then we also line the floor with dry cocoa leaves or thick leaves so that they can hide under during the day and come out during the night. So, one interesting thing I also realized from your greenhouse is that you grow, um, is that you grow cocoa yam. Yes. So cocoa has been planted throughout. Is there a reason for that? So it's also one to reduce noise, to reduce light, to reduce uh, the impact of the sun mm -hmm. going in there. As well. So and also acts as feed for the snails. So snails also eat greens uh, like uh, the cocoa yam, and it makes it very pleasing. Like if you look at it, mm -hmm. some clients even eat some of the the cocoa yam leaves themselves. And I know a client that doesn't use the greenhouse for snails. She grows the cocoa yam and exports. Oh, okay. Yes. So next day delivery is in London. She does. Uh, she has about four of the greenhouses, and she just plucks the contumery. And every three days you have new contumery mm -hmm. coming. So that's how she also, you know, does her market wow. basically. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. So um, now let's look at the. Um, you mentioned earlier that. Humans are not supposed to have a lot of contact with these um, snails. Yeah. So how do you monetize them? Especially if they borrow, what if there are some diseases? How do you even get to know those things? Okay, so we do night adaptation or night uh, monitoring. Mm -hmm. So in the night, you see a lot of them will come out. You see them all over the net. So you do an estimation. And then in the, I, I'm not saying the greenhouse is perfect. Mm -hmm. It also has its flaw. Because at every given time, you won't know exactly how many snails you have, but you can estimate. So, uh, like, if you put food tray in there, a lot of the snails will come around it. So, all the trays, you can take pictures, and there are softwares and things that can count for you how many snails there are there. Or you can even count it yourself, that these have 1,000 here, 500 there, and then you know how many snails you are having. And especially on the net, in the morning... And uh, later, dawn, getting to dusk, you see a lot of them, of them. Mm. on the net. And that also helps you. And the bad thing is that if they die, you can smell them. Mm. So early in the morning, you can go in there. We put uh, packs of uh, concrete tiles in there. So the concrete tiles make sure that you can have a place to step and be able to take care of them and see if everything is going well. So... These are some of the things we do to take care of them and also monitor them. You have um, been in this since 2015. Who do you, who are, who is your market? How do you then attract them? How do you make sure that you sustain them since it takes about a year for yes. the show to be ready for table? Okay, so I tell people innovation is part of Trishwellis. Okay. So we innovate. That's why when people are catching up to us, we innovate and then they, they don't see us anymore. Okay. We are not there anymore, as, as people affectionately say. So one important aspect is that we're sensitizing people as to how beneficial snails is. Okay. So it's a lean meat. It doesn't contain fat. It's uh, very accessible. If you can raise it, you can raise it anywhere. So we're selling them on the strong suits of snails as uh, additional or uh, an alternative protein source so people were like oh i knew we're eating it but i w can you raise it then we say sure now we're doing it on a an innovative stage and they're making sure that so there wasn't any market 
but we made a market mm -hmm. by sensitizing people. people and when they are their best and exhibitions we do snail barbecues okay and then send it there so someone will be uh -huh. passing and they're like what is this is it snails and we even add some mushrooms in there to garnish it and make it nicer so a barbecue of snails and mushroom so people's interest were piqued once they taste it people had not also tasted snail mm -hmm. before so once they taste it with the cartilage you know when you are eating snail it's mostly like you are eating the joint of a chicken the cartilage go yes. grow, grow grow like that so people love the texture mm. unlike other meat sauce and the health benefits of the snails is also one thing with drumming and the calcium base so in the olden days people were using snail shell as uh, a cure for osteoporosis that is if you had brittle bones or if you are calcium. pregnant and you needed calcium people put it in fire bake it and then grind it very smooth like this and then add it to their feet so we are still telling people that the old way still works, works. and snail has a lot of uh, uh, market on that so we are we have FDA approval to package snails in pouches like this and then we sell them uh, we sell them to hotels and restaurants as a, as a delicacy when you go to restaurants like Buka and other places a platter of snails that is four snails is going for 250 cities and you ask yourself why because now it is a delicacy yeah. and we are looking at making it a household name so that everybody can take uh, a snail once every month and then kids can now play and we also have the export market where a lot of the Ghanaians especially between the ages of 25 up to 50 who left Ghana maybe very little mm -hmm. or young now crave for that okay. so the market for snail externally export is even far better than local market because we sell it three large snails go for 20 pounds when we send it to UK and we send it live so we exported, exported a lot of it last year and we're, this year we're looking at even doing more especially during the rainy season yes. oh, okay all right so um you mentioned something on the recycling in the olden days and you have been in this since 2015 what yeah. are some of the recycling avenues you have in place okay so in terms of recycling we recycle the shells mm -hmm. so we turn it into animal feed okay. we also bake it currently it is not edible by humans because fda did not approve that uh, because there are still some uh, toxins because they stay so much in the soil yes, so we need to do a food grade one which we are not as a company yet there we don't want to worry ourselves so much with that part but now the feed market is even selling more mm -hmm. than usual and that you don't need a lot uh, we also have the approved with the uh, feed and uh, when it comes to recycling snails also recycle household waste Okay. food uh -huh. leftover veggies leftover fruits you give it to them and they will eat it and recycle and then make the soil they are in very good for planting other vegetables and we also recycle metals so we use some old metals to do the greenhouses uh -huh. and sometimes we buy new metals and use so these are some of the recycling avenues that we use yeah. what are the slime yes so the slime is a whole new market so fortunately for us uh, we tagged along the dutch export academy okay. so we were invited into that and then they took us to netherlands so we we're in netherlands uh, last week and then we went to germany and we went to italy to see the center of snails there's a whole town like accra mm -hmm. that does only snails and export to all over the world it's called Cherasco in Italy and when you go there everything is snails they have snail buildings like designs they have runabouts made of snails yeah. everything okay. is snails and they pioneer the snail slime a lot because their snails are smaller and have a lot of slime okay. and ours the AF ironically the AF the one we don't eat is actually the best candidate for okay. slime production oh, okay. which we have a lot of them in other houses so we are looking at about 2024 to start the snail slime extraction that's why we are rolling out this outgrower scheme for people to grow and then we'll buy back from them making sure that we have enough raw materials to do we wouldn't be like 
someone who is building a, a tomato factory mm -hmm. and then go and build it somewhere and won't get raw material. Yeah. So we are building the raw material base first and then Boy, we will yeah. start the extraction. Yeah. So um, as any venture, I'm sure this you have, well, being in this point a while, you encountered a lot of challenges and you've been able to work around this. Yes. What were some of the challenges that you encountered? So one aspect is that people think that snails is not uh, an investable market. They think that is a, sorry to say, quote and unquote, a joke. You know, <laughs> like, it's like you say I'm raising tortoise. Someone will come in yeah, there who is going to buy mm -hmm. tortoise and eat, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, the economic value of snail is so underrated that yeah. people are paying attention to this. And the good thing is that it promotes urban farming because you can do it anywhere. They do not smell, they do not make noise. You can, even in East Lagoon, we have greenhouses built. We have some attache military barracks, we have some Michelle barracks, a few barracks that have the snails there. And they don't make noise, they don't smell. But you can do poultry there. You can do other animals there without attracting the uh, authorities, basically. So one thing is that we underrate snails mm -hmm. as a sector. Because so far we've employed indirectly, that is those that we build for, that they also look for people to raise uh, they are snails for. We've employed about 400 people. No. Okay. Yes. And one greenhouse would take about two people to take care of it. So currently we are just on 200 greenhouses. We are under 200 greenhouses. Imagine every greenhouse we built, two people, two people. getting employment. Mm -hmm. And then another market woman getting snails to sell. Yeah. Another hotel and restaurant adding extra. So it, it adds up. It's a, a ripple effect. Yeah. It adds up. And then the other thing we are facing is lack of uh, uh, ex experiment or lack of research. So there are no people researching on snails now. Mm -hmm. We are still doing the same thing. There are no scientific backgrounds. Uh, we don't have any scientific background. So we are basically doing trial and error yeah. as it stands now. But we are getting ahead. You know, it's, 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 it's better to... Uh, call than not to move at all. So that is also one aspect. And funding. Most of the things we build are capital intensive. Imagine one greenhouse costing 34,000 cities. And then you have to build 10 of them. That means it's a lot more capital uh, to expend. But we don't have people ready to invest in those fields. Because like I said, they underrate the economic value of snails. But we've been doing snails for three years now, uh, seven years now, mm -hmm. and we've done commercial snails for three years. 2021, we did 1.2 million CDs okay. in revenue. 2022, we did 3.6 million CDs in revenue. And in 2024, uh, 2023, that we are in now, we haven't even done half a year, and we've done more in revenue than we had already done. So that tells you that the sector is growing and there's more money here and then we are able to pay our workers we have 22 mm -hmm. uh, each person has snakes first tier second tier or that legally everybody is happy and we are all okay. chilling all right <laughs> okay um most of the challenges that you mentioned are things that uh, maybe if there's an association you can come together pull resources to maybe mitigate these do you have an association that you belong to? Or are you planning on setting one up? Well, yes and no. Because mm. uh, the downside with associations in Ghana is that they think of it as a social club. Okay. They don't invest in research. They don't do anything. They just pay dues, wait for the end of the year, yeah. throw a party, <laughs> and everyone brings their wives yeah. and their, uh, their daughters and things. They come and eat and say, Man, I'm only I didn't get this, so... That's all they are basically focused on. But you know, when you go to Cherasco, for instance, mm -hmm. Italy, mm -hmm. every household pays dues and they give it to researchers. And they put it in the research to learn better ways of raising snails. Better. But this in Ghana, we're going to go to funerals. We'll buy a vehicle just to transport us to funerals. So I don't really feel so great mm. doing uh, uh, setting up a cooperative or putting up a mm. structure like that we had a, 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 a we had a whatsapp group okay about 400 strong and then 
people started selling other things in there so and they started causing panic fear and all that so we dissolved that so as it stands now we don't but we're looking at in the near future mm-hmm. doing a very uh, maybe less chaotic way of putting people together and not using the money for funerals so that is that <laughs> Okay, um, and based on your experience and your well, knowledge exposure and all that in relation to snails, what advice do you have for individuals who are doing this? Because most people are in this business and are leaving. What are some of the challenges? How you have been able to work around this? What advice yeah. do you have for such people? So, like I always say, one, innovation. Mm-hmm. Innovation is key. We didn't say that there's nobody here helping, there's no government, so uh, kumbaya, yeah. we are going home now. So you, the person, snail is an observational kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So you put in food, they eat this one, a lot of it. You know that they like it, so you put in more. Or the best option for you is to one, seek professional help. Come to us and then we do free training. So you come to us and then you do it. The thing with Ghanaians is that we think that everything we can hack it, we can DIY, do it yourself. Mm-hmm. And then do it but you have to seek professional help mm-hmm. because the structures that we put together are no joke like these are highly complex structures that have their own water supply systems and irrigation and it even calculates sometimes for the temperature some of us uh, some of the ones we have have temperature gates etc in there so people thinking that you can do it yourself waste very little money and still earn a lot of is, is really poor it's like setting up a poultry farm and not feeding the poultry and they will, they will feed themselves and then you leave it, you know. So I tell people, one, do your research well, get expert help, okay. pump in the needed amount of resource because you are going to get it back. So do not think that, oh, snails, the snail side, I won't put in money, but the poultry side, I'll put in money, you know. And there are a lot of interesting benefits that are coming up with snails. And very soon, the snail slime will be one of the mm-hmm. leading revenues yeah. for snails. So we urge people to come in, but with every other thing, you have to be prepared. Don't think it's a lean way. You can put one tire somewhere and put two snails in there and then be a millionaire with no time. Okay.